Okay, in this segment we'll be looking again at confidence intervals for the population mean, but this time sigma is not known. And so we will be using a t distribution. Let's take a few minutes and look at our notes. Now, once again, we're using a sample in order to predict a population mean. But this time, we've got a little bit different information, which makes this problem tricky. Now, of course, we have a sample size n. We have a sample mean x bar. But this time, we have the sample standard deviation. We do not have the population standard deviation. And so, in this case, we are going to have to use a t interval in order to calculate our confidence. So like before, we had a z alpha over 2. Now we have a t alpha over 2. Notice the formula has an s for the sample standard deviation and the square root of n as we did before. So let's go back and read the problem carefully. Because on assessments, they don't tell you which is which, and you have to make this fine line distinction. So let's go back and read that key text. Now, it says a toy manufacturer wants to see how long, on average, a new toy captures children's attention. So he tests 17 children at random now, right away we can see that that is our sample size. So we're talking about a sample of 17 children and finds that their mean, whose mean? Well, the 17 children's mean, in other words, the sample mean. So this mean here is 33, that's x bar, with a standard deviation. Now what standard deviation? Once again, this is the standard deviation of those 17 children and that is 8 minutes. Now that is enough to tell us right away that our sample standard deviation is known, but this is not the population standard deviation. So as we begin to work with our confidence intervals, we're going to have to be using the t distribution. Now, if we assume that attention spans are normally distributed, find the 95% confidence interval for the mean attention span of children playing with this new toy, and then complete the table below. Now, looking at our notes here, we can see that uh, our sample size is 17. Our sample mean is 33. 33 minutes, that's the time that uh, these children on the average play with their new toys. But there is a sample uh, standard deviation of 8 minutes. And once again, what we're trying to do is to predict the population mean, not just for these 17 children, but for all children playing with the new toy. We want to calculate the average time that they will play with that. Now notice once again here that as we head into the formula section, we're going to be dealing with an error formula that's going to give us uh, the clue here that we have to work with the t distribution. We have to work with s, which is the sample standard deviation. And so we're going to, uh, first of all, need to work with this confidence back here in the first part. So much as we did before, we say, well, our confidence level is 95%. That is the part that we're sure of. And so we will cut the 95% or 0.95 right out of the center of the distribution. And so if we are 95% sure, then we must be 5% unsure. Now once again, remember that this 5% of which we are unsure is going to be divided equally on both sides of the distribution. So we're going to have to take that 5%. We're going to divide that by 2 and get 0.025. And so what we're going to want to do then is to come up with this t value, which is associated with this 0 0.025, which is going to be over here on the right-hand side. And of course, in order to do that, we're going to want to use our t button. And so we're going to go back to our Alex calculator and calculate t of 0 0.025. Let's go do that right now. So we hop back to our calculator. We hit the T button. We have uh, 0 
to 5. And of course, remember on the t distribution, we must always have our degrees of freedom. Now, here's a little thing we have to be careful of. If our sample size is 17, our degrees of freedom are always one less than that. So our degrees of freedom are 16. So let's make a note over here on our sample size, uh, on our uh, degrees of freedom, that our sample size here, minus 1, gives us our degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom, n minus 1, in this case that would be 17 minus 1, or 16. And we'll have to watch that on t distributions. And remember then that that degree of freedom is always your sample size, minus 1. So let's go back and calculate that. And notice then this gives us our value uh, for our t alpha over 2. And that is going to be rounded to three decimal places, 2.120. And since we have that value 2.120, we can go ahead and plug that in in the next step, which is in our error step. Notice then that we're going to multiply that times s, which is our sample standard deviation. We saw that was 8. And we're going to then divide by the square root of our sample size. Uh, notice here that our sample size is 17. And so we're ready to plug and chug through the Alex calculator. And as before, we can do all of this in one step. So let's go back and look. Notice that I've got this number. In fact, I won't round it. I'll just go ahead and calculate from there. We'll multiply by 8. And we will divide by the square root of 17, which is our sample size. And and we will calculate that error. And of course, that error now turns out to be 4.113 approximately with some decimals after that. As we head over then into uh, our final step, we will notice here that our interval is going to be our x bar minus the error. And of course, we're going to have x bar plus the error. Our x bar then is the sample mean which we said was 33 and we're going to subtract this 4.113 number and then of course we're going to add that but Alex can do that for you all in one step and let's go back and review how we did that before. So we can simply go over here. We can take this value. We can store it. We can clear it. We can put our x bar, which we said was 33. We can add and subtract that all in one step. We can recall our error and calculate the entire interval all in a flash. And so we want to round this answer here to one decimal place. So we look here and we see that's going to go 28.9. And on the other side, we're going to have 37.1, rounding to that one decimal place. OK, let's check our answer. And we can see that this is the confidence interval for the mean with sigma not known.